What's going on everybody? Eric Marks here again. Uh, got my family with me yet again for another landscape photography vlog. This is one of a uh, very few days this summer where it has not been like 98 degrees with a thousand percent humidity. So we're actually going out into the real world. It's unbelievable. Um, so my family decided to tag along and uh, my wife is going to get some exercise and uh, push our daughter around in the stroller while I'm chasing the sun and um, go into a park by the lake that should be in a pretty good position for the sun. Um, I know the last couple of landscape vlogs have been working very last minute and this one might be about the same. Uh, it's very hard to be on time these days. Um, when you have to get another little person ready to go out the door and uh, bottles and all that good stuff. So, uh, but it's still looking good. We're a couple minutes away from the park. The sun sets in about 40 minutes or so, roughly. And there's this tiny little dock by the lake that uh, should be getting a really nice um, kiss by the sun right about now, or maybe even in the next 10 or 15 minutes. So I'm gonna set up there in a minute and I'll turn the camera back on when I have my camera gear set up. Alright, so change of plans. The light isn't exactly where I wanted it to be, so I'm gonna have to go to a different part of the park. Uh, it's beautiful light, beautiful clouds, but I don't know if I'm actually gonna be able to get the right angle in time, but I guess we'll see. Here's what I'm looking at right now. I know you can't really see all of the beauty on the video camera, but uh, captured correctly on photo should make for a good shot. So I'm trying to walk quickly back to the area that I parked at, which is kind of annoying because I walked about three quarters of a mile over here because the Photographer's Ephemeris application told me that that is where the sun would be the best. But I guess technology can sometimes be incorrect. Uh, sorry, it's no big deal. Uh, it's still, let me check, about, I guess, 30 minutes or so until actual sunset. Uh, so, with a bit of, bit of luck and some hope, hopefully that will go a long way and get me the right shot because these have been some really good clouds tonight, and I'm hoping that uh, these clouds mixed with uh, some exposure bracketing and some, uh, I don't know, I guess I'm trying to envision the shot. I might do a panorama, but either way, with the correct technique in bracketing this right with all the detail in the clouds and maybe even uh, a panorama, like I said, it could turn out to be a very cool shot. So, I'm just trying to book it back to where I came from in order to see if I even have a chance at getting the right shot. So I guess we'll see. Uh, okay, so I think I've set up. Uh, I'm gonna have to hop over this fence, which shouldn't be a problem. There's the sun out there. Uh, I have literally, like, maybe five minutes before the sun goes behind uh, the tree line over there. Uh, so, I guess we'll see. I have this little foreground right here that I'm hoping is going to be used to get some reflections. Uh, sorry if the uh, vlogging camera is a little wonky. I am currently just trying to get my camera set up correctly here, so I'm not really paying attention to... Uh, if I'm in the frame or not. So I apologize if the video production quality kind of drops here a little bit. Okay, let's see. So I am shooting this at f8 just to be sure that I'm getting everything. Uh, actually, f11, I'm sorry. f11, I've got, let's see, 
bracketing turned on at three frames, three exposures. And then my ISO is set to the native 64 on the D810. So let's set the shot up. All right, got myself all set up here. Uh, I'm doing a, like I said, a three HDR bracket. Um, I very incompetently forgot my uh, cable release, so I'm having to use the self timer, which if you've seen my previous videos, I don't really like using my self timer because it doesn't really make me feel as involved in the picture making process, but you know, for one photo, I don't really care so much. Uh, huh. I'm not a huge fan of this composition. It's kind of leaning kind of right heavy. I'll show you what I mean. You can see there's tons of greenery all right here and kind of nothingness over here. And so it's kind of leaning everything to the right, which I don't really like. So I'm gonna to try to recompose and then I'll start the camera again. So I recomposed by just uh, taking the camera up higher. Uh, and surprisingly that worked a little bit. So you can see a little bit more of the foreground to the left. There's some ducks in the foreground. So it's kind of evening out the foreground a little bit. It's not perfect, but uh, I think I can make a good shot out of it. So that's making me happy. Um, I'm just gonna keep shooting uh, even past the sun actually going down. Just to see if I can get some lasting color because uh, this has been quite a stormy week, a lot of thunderstorms and stuff, so typically when that happens, uh, those thunderhead clouds can render some really nice, like, deep reds after the sun actually goes down. So we'll see if that happens. Um, I'm still hopeful that it might happen, according to what the weather is doing right now. It's getting much more humid than it was when I got here, as you can probably tell by the sweat dripping off of my head. Uh, but that's okay. It's uh, just nice to be on the lake here. All right, so I changed the composition up again. Uh, and I'm even happier with this one. I'm kind of using this little cutout in the water uh, and in the foliage in front of me to kind of peek through the foliage into this kind of second layer um, of foliage into the clouds. So I'm hoping that will uh, make for a more interesting image to look at. Um, if you look here, let me get this going here. You'll see on my histogram there, let's see if I can get closer. And I have captured in brackets all the way in the highlights, the darkest of darks, and then kind of my middle exposure. So I've got everything, I've got the cloud detail and then all the foreground detail, which you can barely see on the video camera here. But um, yeah, that should give me enough to work with uh, when I get back in post-production. So I think I'm happy with what's happening right now. It looks like the colors are just kind of getting um, a little bit more vibrant, which is good. Sometimes they can just kind of flatten out behind the clouds and just completely dissipate into uh, blue hour, kind of a flat blue hour, which blue hour is good too. It's just not really good when you're shooting the water with not, you know, with no interesting foreground. Because um, there's no stars you can really see. It's a pretty cloudy night. So I'm hoping that uh, instead of blue hour being a nice flat sky, it will just end up being a like a insanely blood red sky that would be the best option here so we'll see if that happens my shutter speeds changing by the second here uh, I keep having to switch around my settings right now uh, it's giving me a one second exposure 
on my uh, middle exposure. So the one second exposure at F11 ISO 64 is what my camera meter says is correct right now. Go ahead and take another bracket set. Um, and then of course I'm shooting three stops uh, above one second and three stops below one second so I can uh, mix all these brackets together back in post. <clears throat> and uh, by the way, I'm using my uh, Faisal tripod, which so many people Literally so many people uh, have been asking me about ever since I posted a video on it uh, I've gotten emails about it and YouTube messages and comments galore So I need to do uh, the by the way the messages all are beating me up over not releasing a uh, Kind of an update video on where I am with it, which I know I said I would I'm sorry I will release that very soon, but quickly. Um, I'm still loving it There's a couple of cons that I have found that aren't deal breakers by any means um, but I'm, I'm still loving it. I've been using it since May, uh, and it is now uh, middle of August, and uh, I, I love it. I think it's a wonderful tripod. It's way better than my really right stuff tripod, even a little less expensive, which is a bonus. And uh, yeah, I'm, I'm digging it. I love it. It looks nice aesthetically. Uh, it's, it's very light because it's carbon fiber. Um, I love the legs. The action on the legs to you know quarter turn and pull them out is very easy. They haven't gotten stuck on me yet. Um, it is possible to take the legs off of the quarter turns and clean them if you're shooting by water like I am or in mud or something. Um, man, my exposure keeps changing again. Now I'm at almost two seconds. Uh, by the way, another uh, question that I get quite often, I don't know if you can, I really don't know how well you can see my screen, but it, this is my composition. You can see where I'm focusing. A lot of people ask me where I focus. I typically, if I'm using a wide angle lens, like I am now, using the uh, 16 to 35, you'll notice that I'm focusing uh, one third of the way into my photo. And so what that does is that it allows everything from foreground to background to be in acceptable focus. Um, versus if I were to just focus in the first thing in the foreground or the last thing in the background, uh, one of the two might be a little soft. So I always focus about a third of the way unless there's something like directly in front of my lens then I do focus stacking, and uh, if you want to know what focus stacking is or how to do that, uh, I'll post a link to the video down in the description. I actually have a uh, full tutorial on focus stacking on my channel, um, in case you guys want to do that, which it's a very, very useful tool in uh, many different situations. But with this situation, I think uh, focusing one third of the way through is going to be perfectly fine, because uh, there's a couple of... Uh, little blades of grass and a couple little plants in my immediate foreground that I don't really care to be perfectly sharp Honestly, they might be uh, Distracting if they're in perfect focus, so I'm okay just to kind of use those to kind of frame the shot um, All right, cool. So this is more or less what I'm getting. Let me get the video camera down to kind of what I'm getting So that's about it. So that way I'm as you can see I'm kind of evening out the the composition a little better uh, before my composition was like this and you can see the problem is that this was really heavy to the right with the trees here and the foreground here and kind of nothingness over here. So I moved it to be about like this. So that way we're just clipping the foliage over here and just kind of clipping the foreground over here. And then we have a nice horizon line with the sky. And my horizon line isn't halfway because that can be kind of confusing to the eye. I always like to put my horizon in the top third or the bottom third of the shot. So right here, it's kind of in the top third. And I think this is a pretty acceptable composition. Uh, it's got some interest here, some interest here, and then this kind of waterway that leads you right out to the main event, which is the clouds tonight. So, uh, so here we go. The sun is officially set, and mm, my fear might be happening. It might be dissipating into blue hour, and the color might be leaving which is kind of a bummer, but it's okay because at least I found this nice composition before that happened. That would have been a real bummer if I couldn't find a composition at all. So at least I found the composition and got the clouds while they were nice. And I got the sun kind of peeking over the horizon and shooting across this, this tree line here. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm pretty happy with this. So I'll wait just a little bit longer because that's, that's what landscape photographers do best. We wait. We have to have insanely good patience which can, which can be hard sometimes um, you just gotta wait and see what happens it's all it's all up to mother nature you never know what's gonna happen in five minutes the sky could look completely different or that in five minutes it could be 
pitch black with no clouds at all. I just don't know. Um, so I'll keep waiting and we'll see what happens. But I think I got a pretty good shot. So it's about maybe 15, 20 minutes since I talked to you last. Um, the colors did just kind of disappear into nothingness. Uh, not a big deal, because I think I got a pretty good shot before that happened. Um, but I did take a few more shots once the sun went down. Uh, and I did not shoot them in bracketing, by the way. This is something I wanted to talk about just on the short walk back to the car. Um, once the sun goes down and that high dynamic range in your scene kind of disappears which means really really bright sky really really dark foreground uh, you don't really need HDR all that much because one exposure on most modern cameras sensors should be able to pick up the detail um, if the sun isn't involved is basically what I'm trying to say there was no harsh sunlight the sun had gone away down the horizon there was just some clouds in the sky and uh, so I was just taking some exposures based on what my meter said. And they were coming out nice. They were like uh, 15 second exposures. And I had my polarizer on my camera um, just to take the glare off the water. And they were turning out good. So I think that was a decently successful landscape vlog for tonight. And I will see you guys in the next one. If you would like to stay up to date on all of my latest photography videos and adventures, click the big subscribe button below. And if you would like to find out more about me and how to become a great photographer, visit my website at findingmiddleearth.com.